the reason for the presentations are like the camera set has been put together by Ken and me, and that's where you can reach us. Uh, the reason why we're here today because we just want to serve and serve, and that's our mission. That we want to help underprivileged get the benefit of our financial planning when they have no means to pay for it. Uh, the first resource I want to share with you guys is a generic event timeline. Uh, Amina has put this in your uh, black folder yesterday that you got. It's, we've used it for a couple of events and we originally got it for uh, Orange County FB Day, but we customized it and made it very generic so we can use it for any events. If you take a look at this, you can say from pre-event to post-event, anything you need to do to put any kind of events together, you will find that you can you can go down the checklist, put your deadline, assign a person, and keep track of your event. So I don't know if anybody, uh, any of the chapter already has something like that, or, or if you have ever developed yourself. But that's the go ahead. The red line that I, when I saw that in there, I thought it was created on the red line. The red line that's categories and everything. Okay. Um, but that's what we use. So you guys are most welcome to use it, customize it in the way you want it. If you want it in an electronic format, either Amira or I can can email you these things. Uh, Second is a web -like, uh, website link documents. Uh, this is something that we actually borrowed from uh, Minnesota and we customized it to match California resources. But you can take you know, this document and put resources according to your states or what we'll be using. There is the resources for credit counseling, taxes, debt collection, bankruptcy, student loans, anything and everything that you can keep this one document with you with, no matter what kind of client you're talking to. It, you know, if you ever need to refer to a website, that list is always with you. So that's, you know, available to you. And um, I believe she's already put that in your folders as well. Free to take, and like I said, you know, if you want it emailed to you, we can do that for you as well. The other thing I'm going to talk about is uh, navigating your financial orders. It's a it's a very good step by step approach for managing your finances. It's a simple and a very small booklet that you can take it to your uh, pro bono client. We have used it uh, with all attendees as, uh, at Orange County Financial Planning Association Day, and we found that that worked really well because those were the clients that needed a little more help than just the credit counseling. If you, see, you know, uh, and you obviously you know where to order it from. Uh, you can order it through uh, Orange County. Let me show you the booklet. They have what I like the best about it is they have this budget that we have often worked with for the pro bono clients. They have, they have their current planning plan and, and their future spending plan. So you can actually help them design their budget in two different ways. And also, you can help them with the with the balance sheets if if that's what they need. Um, but you can use this booklet for several different things. We have used it even with family former workshops that I actually do, and I found it very useful to just sit down with those clients and work through it after the presentation if I have time. Oh, uh, their banking on our future 
is uh, their program designed for uh, children aged between 9 and 18. And we have used that to work with uh, high school juniors and seniors to educate them on financial literacy. And these are the worksheets that are on your table for you to look at. And they can be ordered through them. I mean, there's no charge for it. We have ordered this. Uh, yes, I have seen that. I mean, we have downloaded it, but this is just their complete booklet. And then we have uh, the another thing I would like to talk about is consumer actions. Their website has a lot of resources. They have some of the quiz game activities that you can use. We have used some of it, but this is just a new resource that we have added recently to our list. But I just wanted to share with you and give the name of the website so you can see how that can fit what you do with your pro bono grants. Like they have uh, court quiz, credit card shuffle activities to teach them about credit card. Their financial literacy programs also the training package. I have looked at it. I have not used that, but I have used the, the credit card shuffle quiz in the past. So just wanted to share that with you that that's something you have, you can use. Uh, additional resources from uh, our chapter, we have used, uh, we've supplied financial uh, planners to sit with the with VITA associates to see if they have any questions that would relate to the financial planners. We have supplied volunteers. Uh, the U.S. government packages that uh, we've ordered for, uh, and you can order as well for Orange County for people, Financial Planning Association days, that has been um, done by Certified Financial Planning Board of Standards, Family Planning Associations, and uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors. I believe Amara also has this packages. We had the packages from our lords and chapters have moved over. We get the materials from GSA. And they're free, so if a chapter if like the materials that are in the ticket and it has, let us know. We can also reach out on DSA if governor out here in DC and say we need more copies of this document or this piece. Some chapters have a paper copies from their Friends Planning Day event, but the materials are free and they came from the government. I think that materials, etc. What company trying to make orders then because everybody's doing financial planning day financial planning week and all of a sudden you're getting one big order of what kind of lead time you're going to Well with this, if you guys, what I would say is look at the kit that you give us a great time and then let us know what you like and then maybe order some copies for those other pieces. You don't want 20,000 bucks coming to your house. <laughs> yeah. um, but if there's pieces that you really like, they probably want you to have them because you can really look for one of the other Actually, we have still that we used for even other presentations from like a year and a half or two years ago. Um, and then um, we have this uh, NEF packages that we used for the high school when we give out uh, high school and colleges when we give out credit presentations. We used uh, several of their different programs like budget and credit, and we put together in a one-hour presentation. So those, that material is very helpful if you guys doing something like that. And obviously the FPA presentations, uh, this, you can get it from any FPA. Jeanette? Jeanette? Right yeah, she's right there. She can, uh, she, she can get it. Uh, FPA presentations we already talked about, but Financial Fire Grill, we've used not only at uh, Financial Planning Association days, but that's something I also use with Family Forward. So those presentations are very versatile that we rely on to use at several different things. Um, with that being said, I'm going to hand it to Ken. Do you want to help me there in a minute? Sure. First of all, before I start, how many people are here for the first time? <clears throat> They're brand new pro bono chair. Okay. And somebody's been here a couple years? 
got a lot of new places and faces. First of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, you're thoroughly going to enjoy being a pro bono chair. You may be kind of going around your head now. I've got a lot going on, but there are a lot of people here that are more than willing to help you. Also, as an unsolicited testimonial for the foundation, I was here when this thing first started, and I can tell you if it wasn't for the foundation, there wouldn't be pro bono. They brought everybody together after 9-11. We had about 23 planners. In the next years, we had Katrina. Can you get down to sit to talk to planners that have been through this? And they served these clients that were definitely in need. And, you know, then came Dana Farber, Walter Reed, long before Walter Reed was in the paper. So you got tremendous resources here. And it's all, you're here because of the foundation. And to be very honest with you, I'm so really a big plug for it is this is our profession. You know, this elevates the uh, CFP and the FBA to a level of being recognized as a profession. I'm a CPA. I think we all know that there are certain things. You can go out and do financial planning. You can, you can belong to the organization. But if you want to elevate the level of being a profession, this is what Pro Bono brings us. And we're only here because of the foundation. The foundation for financial planning sponsors everything. <laughs> also, my 30-second elevator speech, for many of you have not met me, it's what I usually like to share with people before I tell them where I work, is that I'm very blessed in that I have about 1,500 volunteers in the state of Indiana at 300 tax sites that do about 112,000 tax returns every year for free for the low income, the elderly, the nation deficiency, the military, and the disabled. And then I tell them I work for the IRS. There's something about introducing <laughs> yourself. I have evidence for the IRS that they kind of glaze and maybe they don't see or hear everything after that. But the IRS, I've been in this particular job for 10 years, and the IRS about 10 years ago decided if we're going to help the underserved in all these categories of people, we need to partner with people. And over the years, uh, in addition to the partnerships, we've had foundations come in like Andy Casey Foundation, and they're giving money. Of course, we have measurements. We have put the return investment and everything. But they want to build in the financial education and asset building. They don't want to. If you have a, a, a person, that a family that, or young lady that has made $14,000 with earned income tax credit, they might get up to three or $4,000 in a tax refund. I mean, you're talking about a third or 50% of their entire income for the year. So, like Andy Casey said, we'd rather they didn't go out and buy a big screen TV or do something. If they're going to get this big refund, what are they going to do with it? How can we help them? Also in doing this, it's important that you partner with people because we have all these interests like NEFI, and United Way, and you're going to see other people up here. Other people have this interest. So when somebody mentioned earlier, if I can only bring them to this point, I really can't make the recommendation specifically to do the plan form. There are lots of organizations that you learn you partner with, and they can go there for information on housing. They can go there and get free credit for reports. They can go there and find out about unclaimed property. They can go there and find out about the Secretary of State uh, Investment Watch and not get scammed. So what you do is you build these partnerships up. Could you toggle over to the, uh, the first one is the directory of earned income tax credit. I'm sorry, uh, the website. You want to go to the website? Yeah. The IRS, in partnering with all these organizations, every quarter puts out an update, and, the, and this update is out for the Center for Economic uh, Development and Pol Center for Economic Policy. And it will tell you that in the state of Indiana, or any state, this is what I recommend for pro bono chairs before, we all know that sometimes when you're new to pro bono, and when pro bono first started, the efforts might be primarily in the area of the Red Cross, the goodwill, or domestic violence, or something that the pro bono director is directly involved with. That makes sense, right? Well, if you're going into a new city, and you want to know about some people already getting together as a partnership, this is one of the links on your handout. If you go down to the state links, at the right down here, and click on that, you'll get a map of the country. You want to do that? Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. We, uh, We've uh, put this together long distance in about the last 10 days, so we really haven't changed it. Okay, and then I'm going to bias, of course, I'll go to Indiana, go up here to Indiana. See, all the states are here. And like when I mentioned to you, the IRS is partnering with people. This is a spreadsheet 
of all of what we call coalitions in the state of Indiana. So the very first one is, in, uh, that's Indiana. Let's go down here to, uh, at the bottom it should say, Indianapolis. Let's click on Indianapolis. Down here at the bottom of the So all the cities are there. I have them in Bloomington, Evansville, Fort Wayne, Gary, Indianapolis, Jeffersonville, Kokomo, South Bend, Bloomington. I have what I call coalitions throughout the state. In Indianapolis, uh, the, co the chairman's co is the United Way of Central Indiana, if that makes sense. It's also chaired by the mayor of Indianapolis, and we brought them in with the Conference of Mayor for Financial Planning Day. And when you go down, it talks about that they're, they're doing some outreach work as to financial education. And you scroll on down. And it talks about their tax preparation strategy, what they did during that filing season. Down here's the asset building, where they're partnering with people to do individual development accounts. Now, here are some of the core partners. In Indianapolis, there are 90 partners already active in this IRS partnership, from Swab to the, to the Greater Indianapolis Progress Committee, some banks, the campaign, any Casey Foundation. These are the core. And then if you, in United Way, and that's us, IRS spec. And if you go down further, go down further, it talks, okay, so we got bank on is the big thing. We're one of the 16 places in the United States that's uh, being funded by the National League of Cities. You've got Chase, Comcast, Consumer Credit. These are our active partners, and if you could go down further, a thing that came out in the last few years is right here. This is the biggie. They got a $150,000 grant from the IRS, and that grant was not just for tax preparation. The grant was to improve asset building and financial education. Talks about some of the things they did. So on that link, the first link you have there about EITC, you can go into the state, and last year after this conference, I said, anybody wants to call me, I had a nice letter from somebody that said, hey, I've been thinking about partnering with the United Way, and I went out and clicked on the thing, and they were they were the primary partner, I think it was Oregon. And, you know, so you can go out to a state and find out in the different parts of the state what's going on and the people partnering with this particular effort. National League of Cities is a, uh, does anybody know what the National League of Cities is? 18,000 cities in the United States. All the mayors of all these cities get together. They have a subcommittee for EITC. The National League of Cities have gotten onto this Bank On effort. Is anybody familiar with Bank On? California should be. Okay. <laughs> there were 16, California started it, Indiana has two. There are 16 cities where the National League of Cities gave them monies they're pulling together in Indianapolis approximately 23 banks and, and credit unions and all these people, they all agree for the unbanked or the underbanked that they'll offer this product at low cost or no cost and it's all generic. Now imagine pulling 23 financial organizations together saying we're trying to serve the underbanked or unbanked and this is a product you're going to offer and you can't be charging a bunch of fees or, or you know, they got it. And also if these people are in the system that they already have a bad bank account, they give them a second chance. They bring them in because they want to they want to do this. Well, this is expanded to the whole United States. You can talk about this. This has been expanded to the whole United States, but the, the link in there about Bank On, you can find out if you go in that link that I put in your paper about whether there is a Bank On effort going in your area, and that's supported with a tremendous amount of research by Pew. Pew came in Indianapolis and said that you have uh, 66,000 people that are unbanked or underbanked. The goal of the first year was to bring in 5,000 accounts. The first year they came in with 12,000 accounts. So now every coalition in the state of Indiana has a bank on project, and the state of Indiana itself has bank on Indiana. So they're going forth to serve the unbanked or underbanked. Also on your hand out there, I noted that uh, if, if you're not familiar with CFSI, has a tremendous amount of research. They're out of Chicago on the unbanked and underbanked. And they're going into a new phase which I think is quite interesting when we talk about financial literacy, because in the past we always talked about financial literacy and financial education. They're doing research on financial capability, not just literacy, but we want, we want to help these people. How can we help these people? Can we help them with a spending plan? Can we help them with a budgeting plan? Can we help them with their debt? But how, how can we do this? Okay. National League of Cities research. Also, uh, there's a uh, link in here. Every state in the state of Indiana, Purdue, you may think of an extension agency that leaves a bunch of agricultural people, okay? But Purdue University has trained financial coaches in all 92 counties in the state of Indiana. 
So if, as a financial planner, pro bono chair, 350 people. I don't have any planners down in uh, down in Martinsville. Okay. So a guy comes in and says, with the university, says, we're going to do a, a special force. Could you have a planner who can help us conduct this? And so I can go to Purdue Extension. Purdue Extension has trained people that can come in and talk to you about budgeting and planning and help you in remote areas where you don't even have financial planners available. So that map is similar. The Purdue Extension, that link in there is, is the same thing. It's a map of the United States and uh, how you can go to get help. Okay, the next page. Has anybody done the Boys and Girls Club? Nobody in your house? Uh, they got a grant from the, from the foundation uh, and they want to partner with the Boys and Girls Club and have sections for jointly for the parents and the children, okay? So I've done a couple of these and we use the financial fire drill and if you're interested later, uh, I wanted to make this meaningful and, and we're going to have a round table tomorrow. But when you start dealing with the low income, a lot of these people, and it's been mentioned in here, but you've got to remember that basically these people are in a crisis mode. I mean, they are trying to survive. Uh, there is United Way, if you get the opportunity and you're partnering with United Way, they have what they call a uh, simulation, poverty simulation exercise. I have people that have been in my organization for 11 years helping the low income. They put them in here and they say, here you have four, best, four bus passes, okay? So you go down and apply for food stamps. They say, okay, you can do that, but you can't get uh, uh, child care services today. You have to come back. They don't have enough bus stamps. You know, they don't have enough bus passes. They put adults like us in a, in a crisis situation and stress them out. I mean, that's the whole thing. They have people wandering around that will take their bus passes or other things that they're getting. It's called a poverty simulation. And people that I know have worked with this all their life. They said it was like a life moving experience to understand that the people we're serving are in a survival crisis mode, okay? So we took the, uh, you know, the spending sheet that we have that says list your expenses and check off whether they're livable, survivable, or necessary. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Come on, I think yeah, we use this. Yeah. You got it. You got it? Yeah. One of these? Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what I did was I went out and I talked to a lady. I know a lady that makes $30,000 a year. She's got eight children, of which four are living at home all the time. She lives in a two-bedroom apartment, and she makes it on $30,000 a year. So I asked her, what are some reasonable expenses? I mean, what if I go out and talk to boys and girls club and say, well, you know, I imagine you're paying $400 for rent, or, or, your, or your utilities probably cost about $50 a month. They go, you don't have a clue. You know, I'm paying $500, it costs me this much to feed them. So I went to a person that makes 30,000 bucks a year, and I put this together. So I just put this in here, okay? And I think you know if you run the financial fire drill, it's a lot easier for the group to be critical of something up there than it is to put your own information in and be critical of your own information. So I haven't put the amount in. Then I have them check off what block do you think we ought to check? Is this survival? Is this livable? Or is this charitable? And then after they do that, and we discuss that, we put a new one in here. And we show them how they can move from where they are spending. Now, the thing about this, I'm really abbreviating it now, the thing about it is this, Christina Bermudez from the National Boys and Girls Club was there, she said they could relate to it. They could say, okay, here's a lady that makes $30,000, she's not on welfare, she's not getting food stamps, she's got children. It gives them some hope. This is a person that did it, so maybe I can do it. You know, So they look at the plan and they take it more seriously, and we've been very successful with that. But we have some templates and I sent them to Amir, they're available. Okay, the next slide. Uh, Indiana Jumpstart Coalition. Is anybody working with Jumpstart? Their partnerships? Now the reason I say this, you say, Ken, what are you doing? You're like jumping all around here. Because but what happens is the people who are in the coalition are also in Jumpstart. The people who are in the coalition are also involved with Money Smart. You know, when I say I have 90 partners in, in Indianapolis, well, we partner and when the Secretary of State goes to some place in the state of Indiana, talks to him about financial fraud or financial or investment awareness, we talk about other things. But Jumpstart has, uh, in your link here, they have uh, a chart of, this, of all the states in the United States, and many of the states now have gone to a requirement that there's a financial literacy requirement in the curriculum. That's good to put in the law. After they put it in law in Indiana, they never told them what to do. 
So all these teachers are going, oh, okay, what am I going to do? So what we did in the Jumpstart Coalition, we put together some social media and some sites where all these teachers could post what they're doing to address this educational standard in the state of Indiana. Now, we took it another step further in that as the FDA, we're on the Jumpstart board. We're also on the Money Smart Week board. So they decided to recognize one of the top teachers in the state of Indiana in the area of financial education asset building. They were had over 50 teachers recommended, nominated, and when they were finished, the FBA is paying for the winner to go to the National Jumpstart Convention. So what's happening here? We're involved with it. We're getting a lot of visibility because the FBA is involved with it. We're helping them out in a token way of $750, and, and we really are helping them. Okay. Websites for research and social media. Let's go to the next page. Bait Outside is it what? You might know Bait Outside. It's, a, it's, a, it's an accounting attorney slash board. These are some very bright people. They came to Indianapolis. They had, I think, five or 600 people from 12 states. And I got the opportunity to talk to them about people that are graduating from school. These are some of the best accounting students in the United States, and they don't squat about budget. I mean, they, they have, some of them have edu when you listen to them and ask them questions and get feedback to them, it's, it's, it's pretty sad. I mean, it's, they, they do not know some of the fundamentals about when they get out and they got their, their, their debt and they could be exposed to liability. They've got to be sure to have health insurance. They've got to be sure, you know, what are you going to do about this? And so there is a, a link in here about the, the link to beta out the side. Money Smart Week, how many people are in here? Anybody involved with Money Smart Week? There we go. We've been involved with Money Smart for about five years, uh, and over those five years, we now have 150 partners. And when they, when they, and the nice thing about Money Smart is they have a lot of money from the Federal Reserve in Chicago. And when you're finished, they put together a nice annual report about Money Smart Week Indiana. All the people who are Partners are listed, including the FDA, Greater Indiana, and these are also a list of the same partners as what? They're in the coalition, they're in Jumpstart. We keep bumping into people every place we go. So there are 150 uh, partners. They did 250 events, which may go from credit counseling to budgeting, something like that. Okay. We, because we're partnering with other people, we partner with the Homeless Connect. These are people who are homeless or near homeless because of their, their, their economic situation. They bring them together in the convention center in Indianapolis. They can get haircuts, they can get free dental, they can get free health screening, and they can get free taxes. I do some things last year. They, they served 1,100 people in one day. So what we're trying to do is partner with these people, find out who's doing what, help out the Academy of Finance. We, we have... Uh, I'm on the board, so we have about 13 schools. Every year we have a convention for about 300 students, and we have different uh, financial accounting type <coughs> things there. And uh, we give them a $1,000 scholarship. So all the people in all the schools have to submit their, their transcript. They have to submit a summary of their community involvement, a uh, summary of their working, a summary of their academics, and they have to have a letter of recommendation uh, to qualify for the scholarship. $1,000 scholarship, but we got 300 students from 13 schools, and part of the scholarship is put your interest in the financial plan. So others, ones at the bottom, really quickly, INHP is a housing uh, group. Uh, they are so good at what they do. They work with people for six months to two years to get into a house. There's a certified financial planner that is employed by INHP. We've given them a grant. They've gotten a grant from the foundation. Uh, and actually, one time they got a $500,000 unrestricted grant from uh, NGs. That is huge. So I just give you half a million dollars and say, you guys do good stuff. Keep it up. Uh, there's a corporate volunteer council link in there and the Central Indiana Association of Volunteer Administrator and a local community interest uh, found. Central Indiana. The Central Indiana Community Foundation. I misspelled that. And they work with our chapter. They're one of our sponsors. I know some of you people are in the tracks for sponsorship. Well, they're one of our sponsors. But uh, our financial planners and the people in the, in the Indiana FBA serve on their board. So we help them. This is an organization where if you're wealthy, 
you want to have your own uh, charitable foundation or something like that, if you're in Indiana and you'd like to do something specifically for Indiana, they work with our planners. And a lot of our CFPs, when they are out, uh, serve on their board, and they're also obviously very interested in how we can uh, make donations to uh, help people out and satisfy their needs and also help the underserved. That's a very important thing. You have all the links in your handout, and you can call me. And everything will be available.